Hello and welcome to the Political Opinions Podcast, where every opinion is given equal footing and political tolerance and debate are given their proper attention in a world where both are on the decline. Today's episode will cover the different opinions regarding how Trump has dealt with the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. On the 18th of September 2020, a woman widely renowned for her work in the advancement of liberal social rights and a member of the Supreme Court of America died. Her name was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Her dying wish was that her position would not be filled until after the presidential election in November. This wish was, however, immediately destroyed by the actions of Donald Trump, who, just a few days later, nominated Amy Coney Barrett to replace Justice Ginsburg with the aim of using the Republican-dominated Senate to push through the nomination before the presidential election. This episode will not cover the debate over Amy Coney Barrett herself, but rather will focus on the different opinions regarding Trump's quick decision to replace the Supreme Court justice right before a presidential election. The aim of this podcast is not to prove whether or not Trump should or should not have nominated Amy Coney Barrett so close to the election, but rather to highlight the different opinions and provide a comparison between them. I will begin with the argument that Trump shouldn't be allowed to nominate Amy Coney Barrett, followed by the argument that he can, with a comparison at the end. Most of the arguments opposed to Trump nominating a replacement so quickly is that there's been this convention in the past that a Supreme Court position shouldn't be filled during an impending presidential election. Barack Obama, for example, was prevented from nominating a Supreme Court justice in 2016 as there was a presidential election coming up soon. And it, is cla- and it was claimed by Republican senators that the new president should be the one to decide the nominee. The same people who said that and now supporting Trump and his decision to nominate Amy Coney Barrett so close to the election, and therefore it is being claimed that these people are being hypocritical and going against a convention that was used in the past. Furthermore, it was Ginsburg's express wish that her position wouldn't be filled until after the general election. And given that almost everyone has honoured and respected her legacy, it is even more hypocritical, some would claim, to disregard her legacy by by rejecting her dying wish so blatantly. Furthermore, Democrats argue that the Senate have no right to fill the position this close to an election, which could see, and maybe will see if we're looking at electoral trends, a change in the party dominating both the Senate and potentially the White House, and therefore it should be up to a new administration that will be there for the next four years to decide who installs the next Supreme Court Justice. Furthermore, some have claimed that the decision to install Barrett is motivated by Trump in his ploy to use the Supreme Court to stay in power regardless of the result of the election. And it is essentially this idea that a court which supports Trump will be more likely to validate his claims that the ele- election was fraudulent, and therefore there was an ulterior motive to this nomination. There is also this idea that it is the new president's right to choose a new justice, as this is what normally happens. And when a president is this close to an election, they in truth do little and their focus is more on winning the election, essentially. And therefore, it should be up to the new president who, once they've been elected, has more time to focus properly on a good nomination. Furthermore, this is carried on by the idea that given the election is just over 30 days away at the time of recording, there will not be enough time to properly ensure that Barrett is a good choice for the Supreme Court, as the Senate has to undergo a rigorous vetting and interview process, essentially, to highlight the positives and negatives of appointing um, Judge Barrett, and therefore there wouldn't be enough time to ensure she is a good position. There is also this idea that the Supreme Court is too important to be used as a partisan tool. This is a less validated claim, but there are those moaning on the Liberal Fund who are claiming that the Supreme Court is being further politicised and made partisan, which was it goes against the whole idea of the Supreme Court to be a neutral court. And finally, many Democrats oppose this nomination on the basis that it will be Trump's third nomination in the past four years, and it will further increase the conservative domination of the court with a 6 free split from conservatives to liberals. And as such, many are questioning whether this position whether this nomination, rather, will have a negative influence on the rights of minorities and women and gun rights, for example. So therefore, a lot of Democrats and liberals are opposing this nomination because it would further harm their representation within the Supreme Court. Moving on now to the idea that Trump should nominate Amy Coney Barrett. The main one is that Trump is the president. He is still the president up to the day he either is re-inaugurated if he wins the election or if he was if he leaves office, if he loses the election. 
At the moment, though, he is still the president, and it is still within his power to nominate a justice. The president of the United States reserves the absolute ability to nominate a Supreme Court justice, and therefore he is allowed to do so. Furthermore, many would claim that Obama and Trump are in different situations. Obama is leaving off, was leaving office. There was no way at all that he would be the next president, because he couldn't. He had already fulfilled his eight years and two terms, and therefore he couldn't come back. So therefore he was not in the position to nominate a new Supreme Court justice. However, Trump may very well still win this election. And therefore, he should be allowed to nominate a justice on the basis that there's a good probability that he will be re-elected. Furthermore, essentially there's this idea that it is a smart political move, that Trump shouldn't ignore what is in a sense a perfect opportunity to further increase his legacy long after leaving office, whether it's now or in four years' time, Trump's legacy will be that for the next 20 or 30 or maybe 40 years, the Conservatives in the Supreme Court will dominate it until either a Democrat comes in and installs new liberal judges, or, well, we could get even more Conservative, but essentially this idea that it's a good idea for Trump to nominate another justice and further increase his ideological representation within the court. Republicans also support it, so although many Democrats are criticising this move, virtually every Republican in the Senate has said they will support Trump's nomination, and their view shouldn't be disregarded in relation to the Democrats. Neither side is more valid than the other, just in terms of an ideological or part of their standpoint, and therefore they are within their right to support it. Republican senators also claim that they have the power to do so, and so they should be able to do so. They may turn their back on criticisms lodged in the past at Obama, on the basis that they're being pragmatic. They stopped Obama because they didn't want a liberal justice, but now they have the opportunity to install a conservative justice, they will do so. And these people would claim that politics is the art of being pragmatic and realistic, and you should not turn your back on such a good opportunity. Furthermore, Barrett herself is claimed to be a good choice, and she does have a solid record as a federal judge, and many people disagree with her, not on her ability, not on her ability as a judge, but rather her ability, rather her conservative viewpoint, and that is not a valid enough reason to a lot of people to prevent her being positioned. Furthermore, Ginsburg's dying wish has no legal power, and while she may be respected and honoured by everyone, she herself, as she will well have known, has no influence over the court's nomination process, and her wish shouldn't bypass the constitutional normality and process to install a new Supreme Court justice. And finally, yes, President Trump may be coming up to an election, but he is still the president. He's not a president for three and a half or three years. Even during an election campaign, it is still his job to run the country and fulfil his constitutional roles, one of which is nominating Supreme Court justices, and therefore he is both within his power and within his right to do so. Moving on now to the comparison regarding Ginsburg's dying wish, Democrat essentially would argue that if you want to honour her, you should honour her wish and her dying desire. That it's being hypocritical to say how, how good she was and how much you remember her if you're then going to disregard her legacy by just ignoring her final wish, especially so quickly as it was ignored. However, those on the other side would simply say that her wish has no legal power, and yes, it may to some be disrespectful, but ultimately the, the dying wish of one individual shouldn't supersede the constitutional process that America has had for hundreds of years. Regarding the power of the Senate to do so, um, Democrats would claim that they may have the power to do so, but they shouldn't do it this close to an election, as there may be a new political party dominating the Senate, and therefore it could cause problems if the Senate is installing a Conservative judge in the immediate build-up to being directly replaced, potentially days afterwards, by a Senate controlled by the Democrats. But those on the other side would claim simply that the Senate has the power to do it, so they should be allowed to. Regarding the actions of Trump and the, Demo and the Republicans being hypocritical, um, the Democrats would claim that Obama wasn't allowed to nominate a Supreme Court justice very close to an election, so Trump shouldn't be allowed to either, and it sets a dangerous precedent and could harm the trust in the Republican Party. However, those on the other side would claim that it is a different situation. Obama was leaving office, guaranteed to leave office, but Trump may very well still be re-elected, and you can't take that as a certainty. He's not guaranteed to leave, and therefore you should act as if he's going to continue, and therefore he should be able to nominate. Regarding waiting until the election, 
the Democrats would claim that a new president would be there for four years and therefore it should be their decision, their choice essentially to nominate it. They would be in a more established position with a long road ahead of them to choose a Supreme Court justice, while Trump especially would claim that he, he's still the president and he has the power to do it and therefore there is nothing wrong with him nominating a Supreme Court justice. Regarding ideology, Democrats oppose a further shift in the Supreme Court, if it's meant to be a neutral court, but they would claim that the neutrality is being harmed by this massive conservative dominance at the moment, and it is going to have negative knock-on effects for a number of civil and social rights that a lot of people would point to. However, those on the other side would claim that, yeah, both the Republicans would claim that their ideology is just as valid as the Democrats, and the situation is favourable to them. Trump was elected, the Conservatives are currently the ones in power, and therefore they should be able to exercise that by installing a Supreme Court that reflects their viewpoints. Regarding pragmatism, the Democrats don't have much to say on it, they just point to hypocrisy and essentially being morally bankrupt in that regard. However, the Republicans would just say that they're being smart and pragmatic. And then finally, on the quality of the judge being chosen, many Democrats may say that the, the process won't be done properly. This is a job done for life, so you need a very good person in that position. And therefore, with only 30 days, the process won't be done properly. It's going to be rushed through and then may end up with a judge who is not qualified or able to fulfill her role as, as well as some of the other potential nominees may have been. However, Republicans claim that, she again, she has a good record as a federal judge and therefore they can do the process properly and she will be a good choice and the Democrats are opposing it, not because she won't be good, but rather because they oppose her ideology. Overall, this event has marked another raise in the stakes of one of the most important and eventful presidential elections in, in recent history. One's view on this entire situation ultimately just comes down to whether they lean towards the Democrats or the Republicans. If you're a Democrat, you oppose it. If you're a Republican, you support it. If you're a Liberal, you oppose it. If you're a Conservative, you support it. It's ultimately as simple as that. Um, but beyond that is the outcome. As the outcome of this election will have a very long-standing impact on American politics and will mean that Trump's impact on American politics has continued decades after he leaves office. He leaves office and if this does go through, which it most likely will, a two-thirds majority for the Conservatives, again, is either a great prospect or a terrifying one, depending on where you stand on the ideological standpoint, depending on where you stand on the ideological, on the political spectrum. But beyond that, what do you think? What's your opinion on this situation? Is there anything that I missed, got wrong, could do better? Let me know on the comments or on Twitter, and be sure to check back on Monday for the different opinions on how, pow on how powerful a Supreme Court should be. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you all soon.